Hello, everybody. I'm Type One Dragon, and welcome back to Crusader Kings Three Tours and Tournaments. I don't know why I had a little brain lapse there, but welcome back to Crusader Kings Three Tours and Tournaments with Svenska Kralm. I know that wasn't entirely in Swedish. Again, still learning, but in my learning. Uh, Sweden is one, this doesn't count as a historical fact, by the way. Sweden is one of the most well-spoken countries that has English as a second language. It's not the official second language, but a vast majority of the Swedish population speaks English to the point where they really don't have an accent. Like they they speak Swedish, not Swedish. Swedish people speak English very very well to the point where they don't have much of an accent, if at all. And for today's historical fact, I'll give it out towards the end of the video. And I will say this: it does involve our good king Eric and his uncle in some way. More on that later, though. But for today, we have a little dilemma that we're trying to deal with. We have four daughters, amazing daughters, lovely daughters. Some of them more than others. But we have amazing daughters that we love very, very dearly. But we're getting on in age and so is our wife. And we have yet to conceive a son. And... Eric the second, a stubborn, stubborn man, he wants that son, so we're trying our best to woo our wife into consummating our love once and for all, to declare her as our lover eternal from now and forever. For one, we really do love her. She is an amazing wife and queen. But also to get a son. We we really need a son. But to start off, even though we did one war last time, we're gonna do some more this time. We're gonna start off big. Yeah him. Chieftain Hunzi. By proclamation of myself, the king of Sweden. And by the light of our lord. I give you a choice. Yield, lay down your arms, and become a true believer in the Lord. Or face the wrath of Sweden. Most likely the wrath of Sweden. Let's see, who is your ally? You got a pretty strong ally, not gonna lie. But I think this will be a pretty easy war. Let's see, I don't even think we need to call him the King of Hungary. He's more of a liability in case something happens around here. And... Rutherinia. Rutherinia is going pretty strong this game. It's, that's interesting to see. How's our mother? Poor health. Yeah, I think we kind of put her in that position. I don't... I think she'll hate us, so... Literally the end of her days, but... We're all just... Just trying to make our beloved home in the north a whole lot better. Of course, for the Lord. And for our dynasty. I cut them off by any chance. I'm gonna have you start sieging there.
Uh, competition. As of late, all my visits to Bona have been ruined by my vassal, Count Hawken. He falls her everywhere like a lost puppy. He attempts to charm the lady. His attempts to charm the lady are laughable. Yeah, I fear his persistence will be rewarded. His love is not true. A coin will persuade him to stop. A coin will persuade him to stop. Yeah, was that a stack? That was almost a stack wipe, but that was still a lot of losses. Are you kidding me? Alright, you know what? I'm gonna call on the King of Hungary. Uh, who did we loss? Uh, involved. We lost some good people there. Come to claim. Oh boy. Yes, Bjorn. My night frets all through the day, evidently attempting to find the right words. At last, as we make our way to dine, he begins sheepishly. My liege. I just heard something knock over in my room. Okay. I hear rumors that Finn, the chieftain of Helgum, has come to see you as a force of his enmity. He talks openly of the illegitimate king of Sweden, who daily usurps his rightful lands and revenues. You want to go, my man? You, you want to go? You want to go? We'll go. I will show Count Eric in at once. I wait patiently on my throne for the arrival of Count Eric, who is the Count of Moray. Oh, Mule. He kneels in deference as attendants bring forth his gifts of coin and precious objects. The oath is taken and scribes record his pledges to serve the Kingdom of Sweden. At last, I bid the Count arise, confirm my satisfaction, and Eric's right to the lands he rules my stead. I accept your generous gift, Count Eric. Van Skolga. How stand kill. Oh, I did change the uh, dynasty banner. Just a little bit. I thought the blue and yellow... It really didn't fit up here. Sure, it fits for the flag of Sweden. I'm rambling at this point, but the just the plainness of it didn't really seem that well. So I changed it to be a little nicer. Intruder. Every time I close my eyes, I see Queen Bonner's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaked in shadows, I make my way to the garden outside her living quarters. Why am I not there with her to begin with? We will never know. The sight of Bonner's chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close, and yet so far. But wait, who is that climbing up the tower? The shady figure stops by Bonner's window and unlatches the shutters. My honeycomb is in danger. I must save her. The sounds from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I have ever known. Without care for life or limb, I hoist myself through Queen Bonner's window. I feel as if I am plunged into a frozen lake. Bonner's on the floor, the intruder pushing her down, the gleaming blade between them. With a roar, I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Bonner. Are you all right? I ask cautiously. As if my words were a spell, she finally unfreezes and throws herself into my arms. Thank God you're here, Eric. I will never let you get into harm's way again. Never.
have a son, please. Oh. <laughs> I... I just fell and had a heart attack. Oh. Today, with the passing of Halston, the future of Sweden has changed in its course. We will never know what kind of king he will become, for if his life is a blessing or a curse. And death. I will vote for my daughter. Of course, no one else will vote for her, but I will vote for my daughter. Daughter Astrid and her little friend Ulf had taken a copy of the scriptures from the study and brought it into the playroom. Then spent hours trying to understand what was written on its pages, talking about God and the many mysteries of the divine. Astrid seems to have developed a deep respect for the words of the Catholic faith. He would do well treating holy words with reverence. Be humble, my daughter. Uh, people just keep dropping dead. A rusty tool. Nah, I'm feeling like it. Bearing through the dusty mark of the armory, my gaze travels over multiple different weapons of war. A pair of battered leather greaves, a recently sharpened sword, a spear with worn half, a rusty farming tool. I pick up the farming implement. Perhaps it has been limped in unknowing with the weapons. I have the tool examining its curiously carved sickle like blade. As I give an experimental swing at a nearby halberd, the blade pieces the blade pierces the mail, scattering a few iron rings across the floor. Interesting. Wonder if this could be repurposed. I wonder if this could be repurposed. Choices, choices. Taking the small blade out into the midday sun, I inspect it more closely. The blade tapers to a point at one end and disappears into the tang at the other, leaving the a length of a slightly rusty but still sharp iron in between. The kink at the blade's head gives the implement a wicked curve to it, Useful for cutting through shrubs, you think. Or maybe finding gaps in armor. It's clear this could be repurposed as a weapon of war. But the question remains exactly what gaze said weapon would take. If you strain out the blade, it could be a useful dagger. Perhaps if we mount it on the end of a spear. Why don't we just use it as is? Let's mount it on the end of a spear. Dang it. Let's work some stress off. And... Oh, there we go. Let's see. I could reset my perks and go get all sapper. I might end up down seducer. Because hmm. I need a son. I really need a son. I'm thinking either family 
focus, going down the family hierarchy. Or seducer. Hmm. It, it'll be interesting to see. As for you, I will ransom you. You really have no home, so I will give you one. You don't have a home either, so I will give you one as well. You... I can ransom off. You, I can't ransom. So I'll just demand your conversion. And you, can I ransom? I can. So I'm going to have you educated as a. I'll have you educated by my wife. You'll get converted to Swedish. And you will possibly become a shield maiden. As for you, you're going to get taught by my courtier here and become Swedish. And raise a rune stone. Every rune stone tells a message of some significant event in the life of the commissioner. From the smallest peasant to the king like myself, the stone records all. What shall this moment speak of? Perhaps my vanquished foe, Prince. Now that I decide what to put on my rune stone, the question remains where to place it. Memorials to victories such as my triumph over Hans are a consistent reminder of a war's glories and they are the best place in areas to require encouragement to cooperate. Of course, one or two spots spring to mind. We will put it in Bustamanlan. And I am illustrious. Nice. Store accolades. The martial dignitaries of my retinue lie dormant. Spread word to the knights of the land, the king of Sweden calls. Where these siphons from my time on our stations of honor shall find themselves warmly welcome. Oh. I will say, I have, I have been playing a little bit off camera, especially with the, uh, one of the new mods that just came out of the workshop, Nordic Flavor, or Nordic Arm Honor, one of the two, but it just adds a little bit more flavor to the Norse part of the game. You add some new face, add a few new mechanics, and is completely, and I do mean this, completely achievement friendly. Go download it if you haven't already. A flesh wound. This butt. Pull blood is congealing under the feet of Tola, a diplomat sent by my ally Queen Mother Ingrid of Upland. By the immense quantity soaked up by my fine carpet, I can only assume he has been bleeding on this spot for hours, if not longer. Then why hasn't anyone tended to this man? My apologies for this mess. I was defenestrated by a dwarf trying to rob me in, in on my journey to Strigans. However, as the rapscallion crushed my fall, the diplomatic visit can continue. It would still be days until my blood lost is fatal. Guards, force this man to see the physician. I'll hear what he has to say later. And since I'm here, let's assault court. Uh, sitting on my throne. Serious business. A frightful peasant strolls all too close before guard steps between us. Oh, he backs off with a wink, laughing through scant teeth. Your lordness, 
I come here from Sodomanland with a matter of great import. His eyebrows undulate. You see, King, the potter's wife so slipped a fence one night, and she she only went and got into the old shepherd's veggie patch. His pride and joy, tears of laughter streamed down the convulsing peasant's face. Steward Eric, fix us, please. Eh, hey, you may not like me that much, but... You're a fool. My fool. Hmm. He's a stubborn, brave, raffle man. I, I don't think he would put this guy as a fool. Oh. Um. You good there, buddy? Are you okay? Also, I don't know when they updated this. I don't know how to feel about it yet. But, uh... Um... Go on. Popper opinion is not bad. Frontier... Braces. The next partitioner is evidently somewhat of a stranger in this court, as I do not recognize her, and the eyes of Marshal Chodwin have been on them since they first entered. My lord, I have come to declare that the people of Giovando are refusing to pay taxes you have levied upon us. In times past, our land and people were granted rights and privileges which you recent exhaustions ignored. We request that you address our concerns fairly. Or else. <laughs> Imprison this wench marshal and then crush the rabble. How dare you. Come in here, Ingru. Come in here. And try to tell me what to do. Throw her in the dungeon. I can be a gracious king. But do not edge on my wrath. A lost treasure. My lord, I represent the religious community of Lysgan. Lexand. Lexand? Lexand. Rao rummaging through our Ma's Archa archive, we have come across a very peculiar book. The cover was dusty, the binding fragile, and the pages were yellow at the time. But it contained the most unusual drawings, and the scripts itself was unknown to us all. We are certain it is unique in the world, along lost faults of knowledge, a true treasure. That's why we offer it to you. Perhaps it's the original copy of the Will of God, or its memoir, in the world's creation. Thank you. I will add it to my collection. As the last partitioner departs, various courtiers follow the out of the room, having business to attend elsewhere. Others remain talking amongst themselves about the recent proceedings. Soon, the ceremonial formality of the proceedings has dropped away entirely, with the hum and bustle of normal courtly life taking its place. My business is done. Yeah. Nice. Now if only you could have one more. Just one more child. That's a son. Please. And there goes my mother. I was getting ready to unpause until something else happened, but there goes my mom. Oh boy. Well. What is that mark? Okay then, that's a very interesting coat of arms, but... 
That is now the realm capital. And my brother has the last piece of the puzzle that I very much would like to have. But, all in all, that is one goal completely done. We now have our primary duchy fully under control, save for one county. And we do have the Grand Temple of Uppsala. Let's see. That'll give us tax, levy, tax, growth, piety, renown, men of arm maintenance, and non effectiveness. Let's go. Now I can now give Engramanland unto someone else. So, that is now yours. And he is now yours. Enjoy. And there's sappers. Rest in peace, mother. I promise to do better than I was. I promise to do better. But in the meantime, I'm going to speed ahead a little bit. Probably get a claim over in this area and then hopefully be back with the birth of his son. Hopefully. Or just unpause and go towards the white stag. Why not? My lord, this search of yours for a mere beast. I have to admit, it worries me. My prince, Bishop Algot, approaches me as I sift through reported signs of the white stag. Evidently, anything that distracts so much attention could have been sent by Satan. Do not assume its existence is a sign from the Lord. The stag is a messenger from God. Eh, 67% chance. Hmm. Could you say it's none of your business? Or. The stag is a messenger from God. Uh, of course, I rolled the bad dice roll. Eh. Uh, what a little... No, I don't have them. 300 gold? Jeez. I'll take the money, but I ain't giving you money. Oh, I also... also figured out how to properly do this now. Let's see, your... Where are you stationed? You're stationed there. Station you there. I'm going to change you to there. I'll station you there and station you back over here. I could have also given that away, but yeah, what's done is done. Let's see, and I'll probably end up changing this to help boost up the men of arms damage, which I can't. Station armor, station actually, station infantry. I can't do that. This is currently dual holding tax, station and arms damage, probably. Okay, I'm going to keep that, but I do want to upgrade the trade port. What do I have here? Station Man at Arms. That's really not all that useful. So I'll probably change it for... Farms and Fields. And I'll probably change you to Blacksmiths. Then once I get more this place on the control, I'm definitely going to change you over to probably the barracks as well. Now I'll be back with hopefully the birth of our son.
Okay, two things happen now at once. An extra hand. For all the authority I suppose we wield as king, I cannot be everywhere in the realm at once. There will always be those who forget to obey my orders once my attention is turned elsewhere. This is where my knight Beg could come in, who has been faithfully enforcing my decrees while touring the countryside. Could he, could he serve as my right hand man and take a more active role in administering my realm? Yes. Yes, he will serve me well. Congratulations. You are my right hand. Speaking of, I need to put someone in for... I'll put in my brother. I'll get him to try and get more loyalty. And a book on diplomacy. All right. I'll commission it. 4135. Mm. There's a big risk. I can take all of Finland very, very easily. A massive land grab would be good. Beneficiary Lana approaches me with her arms full of scrolls and manuscripts. My lord, there are so many areas of diplomacy that are worthy of attention. Courtly conduct, relationships, poetry. Don't even know where to start. What topic was your muse learned, yearned for? By the way, I'm just going on. Tokes hunt. See you later. Hey, Tok. My wife is pregnant. Let's get out there. A name to remember. My beneficiary, Donna, approaches me with a thoughtful expression. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? She must read my irritation in such a personal question from my face. Because she continues, I mean... Is there anyone you wish to dedicate your commission artifacts to? Is it turning out well, but a meaningful inscription would make it even more personal? To my beloved. Actually, to my mother. In memory of her. Emon has been admiring my bird since we first parted for our hunt. I can hardly blame him for such a magnificent and beautiful beast it is. We are near a small river, rich and bussy, with fish of generous size. Busy. Now I feel this is a perfect opportunity to show what my falcon could do. My falconer skills will be impressive. Or I'll just grab the fish myself. Yeah, I figured. All right, let's go time. But swords are none the wiser as my falcon scans the ground from high above. It swoops like a bolt of lightning. The care he scrambles for cover is already too late. Nicely done. Sweet, busted feather. Which I don't have. Oh! Lennox struggle. Our journey is violently interrupted by the sound of tearing flesh in gnashing jaws, and the desperate cries of a man about to meet his end. The noise is so horrific, it must have come from the depths of hell. Attempting to track the source, we found a desperate knight struggling with a wild Lennox. His blade is wedged between the beast's jaws, but his grip is beginning to falter. This man deserves my help. Hey, let's go. 
You owe me. Back, let's get you married. You, you have no life. Why is this not equipped? The sword of holy devotion. Alone in the kitchen. Greetings, my lord. Gunnar, one of the cook says. I have your daughter Astrid with me here. She promises to clean the pots and the cookery, you see? He draws in a sharp breath. But she nibbled all the food like a little rat and then fell asleep on the floor sack. She's due hiding, if you ask me. But I'll leave her with ye to do with what ye see fit. This child is so unmotivated and lethargic. He could confess. He could confuse her for a corpse. I. Alright. Lazy. Absolutely hate that trait. Compassionate, though. He will be compassionate. Daughter. You know, hopefully. Hopefully. We get this succession all cleared up. Most of you, some of you, will probably end up at the nunnery. That came out a little harsh, but eh. Thank God I can go inside again. Alright. Six months. Two more months. Come on. Come on. Who can marry? My niece and this guy. Why are you patrol? You know what? We we'll go break the patrol though. Natural renewal alliance. No. Maybe. There. Someone in the Holy Roman Empire. You can't possibly get hurt. Okay. The twists and turn of fate have not always been to my advantage. God knows I was cursed the day I met Thord. Today, however, the curse has been lifted. Fate has smiled upon me. You brought that... Excuse me? Contemptuous cur to his grave. Excellent. Jeez. Thordman! Was... Burn to death? What? You were... My brother in Christ. Who burned you? I am... I, I honestly don't know how to handle that. Burned to death? I should probably revoke these tiles as soon as I can, but jeez, man. Is that the one with the special building? No, it's that one. Jeez, burned to death, my guy. Highest quality. My lord, look at that paper. I've never seen such fine quality before. 
I beneficiary on a Brixel loan breaks away from her market possession to accost the merchant selling the coveted item. Ecstatic over her find. By this, my project would reach new heights. I would create something truly marvelous. Please, my king, bestow this gift unto me. Your project is worth investing in. Uh... Dice roll? <gasps> we actually got the dice roll. I am cursed. Another daughter. So we have Astrid. We have Anna. We have Edla. We have F healed. And now Sophia. Three daughters. My nephew might actually be my heir, but he won't get any of these titles unless I add Scandinavian Succession to Upland. I'm tempted to add that. Alright, alright. Let's see what we can do with the succession. So, if I vote for my nephew, who is quick. First things first, I'm going to... Uh, your education is almost at end. I will remove you. I'm going to ask you to take the vows because I don't need you. <laughs> Sorry, daughter, but you're on. You're not the best. I can't ask again until the 14th of 98. So in 10 years. When you will be 21. Mm, nah, I can ask you soon. Alright. I could possibly ask you to take the vows. You probably won't accept. You could possibly take the vows. Just in case we'll put you in diplomacy. I'm going to remove me as guardian from you. Lomacy. Not you. You. I'm going to offer myself as your guardian. Are we looking on succession? Hmm. Switch it to male only? I don't have a high enough crown law. Switch it to male only. Hmm. You're not interested at all. I really don't want to use Renown to do it. Because it will only cause issues. Yeah, I'll negotiate an alliance with you. See, how is my wife 36? She could possibly push out one more son. Please, love, please push out a son. And after this, I'm switch over to Scarly. Switch over to family hierarchy. Tough decisions. My wife, Queen Bonnet, has been hovering around my council meeting lately. 
Knowing her interest in matters of leadership, I cannot help but feel that the woman is one is waiting for me to impress her. I could probably engage her in conversation. On the other hand, it might be better for her to simply see me interacting with my men. There's something to be said for at least pretending to know every soldier's face. Mm. We should go greet some recruits. White Stack. Since I started my search, reports of White Stack signs have been coming in from all over Sweden. The swift through the accounts and sort facts from fiction is a huge task. If only the reports were more reliable. Let's do a word sort this out, won't you, Eric? Plus one diplomacy, plus point ten percent prestige. Okay, I'm going. I'm 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 going diplomacy. Plus plus twenty percent lifestyle experience. That that is good. <laughs> my lord, my beneficiary, Lon smiles and gestures me over ink stained hands. My book, my masterpiece, is finished. Behold, a beautiful tome that shows a Ma's understanding of diplomacy as it touches upon subjects such as court alliances. The cover is one that has been painted to display a repeating image of a mythological beast. I am impressed. And that goes right there. Very well done. And you want to make something wondrous. Well, I cannot deny that. Thank you for finding this endeavor of mine, my lord. My beneficiary, Arthur tries to keep his compulsion, but I can see the excitement in his eyes. Boxes, sculptures, thrones, there's no such, there's so much I can make. Perhaps you have any wishes. I will say, a grand throne to fit my halls would be magnificent. Because there's absolutely no way I'll be able to steal uh, do you not have the Throne of Scones? Is that the King of Scotland? Is that the King of Scotland? It's the King of Scotland. Yeah, I won't be able to steal that. Unless I go to war with you. It would be awesome, though. Just mainly for the renowned bones, but it would still be awesome. A model for the ages. I can hear my beneficiary, Arthur, muttering to himself from across the hall. I need something great, something epic to make my creation stand out from the uninspired masses, but what? Just what? When his spirited eyes beat mine, he breaks out into a huge smile and waves to me. My lord, what an amazing idea. Just perfect. What do you think of adding your family's motto to your commission? My family's motto. Trust in the Lord, and strength shall arrive. That sounds lovely. And while I do want to continue down warfare at some point, I'm going to add Noble Vane's family. And next up will be Sea Wolves. I can invite to King Magnus's the second grand tournament. The first, my spy master has come to me with grave news. But we do not yet know who someone's planning to kill Berg. We gotta stop this guy. But I will say we're going to this tournament. Rings King Eric of Sweden. I'm organizing a grand tournament and Oh boy. Namde of Thieki. We will start with a duel contest. A chance to show your skills to all, I warrant. The prizes will be of good quality, should the opportunity for personal goal not be enough to entice you. You join King Magnus II's Grand Tournament and Yutun Mildredia. 
If you are eligible, joining the tournaments will offer a chance to win contests and therefore prizes, as well as relax and take in the sights and sounds. It also provides an opportunity for you to sharpen your martial skills. I will join King Magnus' tournament. And it is a rather safe route to take. But just in case, I will hire some mercenaries. No, I can't hire mercenaries. I'll hire a mountaineer. Actually, I really just need a forest guide. That's it. No chance of getting hurt. Let's go. But with that, I'm going to end the episode here with a little bit of a cliffhanger for the tournament. So I feel like that would be best off being the start of the next episode. But before I go, a historical fact. So I pinned this guy for a reason. And today we're going to talk about the tale of two Eric's very, very briefly. So our character, Eric Stenkielsen. And Eric the Heathen, a Catholic and a Pagan, were vying for the future of their beloved home during this time. And the truth of it is, it's all made up. At least their names were. Scholars do agree that there were two people in Sweden that were vying for control of the throne. One of them most likely a Catholic, one of them most likely a Pagan, but their names, that is the point of contingency here. No one really could agree on their names, and I'll get to that. The tale of two Eriks, contenders for the Swedish crown from 1066 to 1067, so one year, have very little historical precedent outside of the recordings of one Adam of uh, Berman, a chronicler with a little to no information on his life. Outside of knowing he's from North Germany and wrote down the deeds of bishops of the Hamburg Church. So if you want to know where Bremen is, it's around this area here. In fact, there's Bremen right there. And there's Hamburg. So why do... Why does this name get come up? And why is there not much of a historical weight to him in his claims of two Eric's? Well, in his book that I just wrote, The Deeds of the Bishops of the Hamburg Church, in the opening chapters, he chronicles the Norse outposts of Vinland. Yes. That Vinland in what is now Newfoundland, Canada. Now, what I'm saying here is that there weren't two rulers named Eric at the same time. It is possible that one of them was Eric, possibly Eric the Second, or maybe not Eric the Second, and instead it was Eric the Heathen. But Adam is the only source that we have currently that gives these two individuals competing for the Swedish throne in 1066 a name. And since he wrote about the Norse men, Norsemen, actual pagans, in their colony in Vinland around the same time frame, there's a lot of reasonable doubts. In his claim of Eric and Eric. But there's no doubt that he wouldn't just make up these two characters out of nowhere. So during 1066, there was most likely two people vying for control after the death of King Stenkil Ragnos Ragvasad. Ragvildsson. But we don't really know their names. But it is kind of fitting that Adam would choose a Catholic and a Pagan and Astrotrulian with the same name. 
Eric and Eric. Most likely because Eric was a common name in Sweden at the time, just like how John Doe is a common moniker to give to a person you really don't know or who you don't have a positive ID here in the US. But Sweden was still in the process of Christianization at this time. It's coming off the rule of Stenkill, a Christian who had a let's get along with the pagans mindset. So while much of Sweden were still pagan when their other Nord countries were embracing Christ, you had this conflict. And Adam, being a devout Christian, wrote this conflict in a way of Christian versus pagan. The final Vikings going out in style with a war for the Swedish crown. One of the last Nordic countries to fully Christianize. So there take the name Eric and Eric with a grain of salt. Not that the people weren't real just their names and that brings me to why i pinned hilston here because when the conflict finally settled down whoever ended up winning would be succeeded by this guy here halston sten kilson the heir and son to Stenkill. So I find it interesting that Paradox went with Eric and Eric for 1066. Even though just one year later, Halston would be the historical king of Sweden. But I get why they did with that, because 1066 is, sure, the later start date. But you have this challenge of restoring Asatru, or keeping Asatru alive in an area that's rapidly becoming Christian. So, it is a, it's interesting that they went with this. And with Paradox being Swedish themselves... They would definitely have more. They were. I'm sure there's probably an explanation out there as to why they went with Eric and Eric. But with all that said, I've been Type 1 Dragon. You have all been awesome. And as always, stay safe out there. Oh, Padua.